very first comic is titled Ice Cream Truck, and it was uploaded to the website on June 10th of 2016. Just remember that the comic series is called Lucid, but this one doesn't have it on the title, and that's because it was an unnamed comic, but still had the same quality and length of the average Lucid. Since this was done before the series was given a name, a lot of the text boxes were filled in through a computer, instead of handwriting, the only exception to this being Luther, as his talking style is different from everyone else's. Getting into the comic, we can read a description of the characters that are going to appear, such as Randall, his scarecrow playmate, Luther, Nian, and Nyon, who is currently missing. The story goes like this. Randall is seen holding an eyeball from the little part over there, which, according to a science book, is just called the optical nerve. He struggles trying to cut it with a pair of scissors, but we can assume he doesn't manage to do it because the ice cream truck can be heard passing outside. Both Randall and the Scarecrow Kid take notice of this and go with Luther. Randall asks him for money to buy ice cream, complimenting him along the way. The seemingly blushing man having some tea in a cup while sitting in his chair tells him that getting ice cream will only get him constipated, to which his little brother tells him, I won't, I'm a good guy now heavily implying that only the bad people get constipated from eating ice cream. Luther then asks if he's already had his nap today, and after hearing him answer positively, he gives him some money, telling him to look for Nyon, his catman who is lost. Randall and the scarecrow kid catch up with the ice cream truck, and a flower man emerges from it, calling his customers lovely looking boys. Even Randall is slightly confused at the strange flavor options written on the truck, as they serve wood louse and rabbit flavor ice cream, among others. The flower man tells them that there can be a myriad of flavors since his boss can turn anything into ice cream. Furthermore, he says that not just anything will taste that good, and that everything on the menu has been tested already. Randall remains dumbfounded. In the next panel, they ask for the flavors they want. The flower person then says the price, and oh boy, Randall only has enough money for his own ice cream, lashing out at the scarecrow kid and apparently gripping his mouth, as if he wanted to perform fish hooking on him. In total, they will have to pay roughly 17 and a half Canadian dollars tax included for two ice creams. After the scarecrow kid states that he'll have to get something cheaper, the flower person tells him that his order has already been processed, so there is no way he can back out unless he works to pay off his debt. Immediately, a bunch of cow people bust out of the truck, taking the scarecrow with them. Randall, quite unfazed by this, says that he'll just go get more money from his brother. Along the way, his sock garters come off, and we are rewarded with some Randall skin exposure. Close to Luther, one of his catmen is sleeping, but is soon awakened by Randall, who in between praises confesses to him that he needs more money. Seeing through his little brother, he states that this is the face of someone who has not had their nap, and Randall excuses himself, saying it was the milk in the ice cream making him drowsy. Gripping his shoulders, his brother says he cannot lend more money. He looks at Nien, thinking of the possibility of him giving him money, to which Luther says he can't either, because Randall is going to bed. Eventually, Randall gives in and admits it was all a lie, though he thinks he's also lactose intolerant and blacks out. Some time later, Randall wakes up in his coffin, wearing a hat that says liar, liar. Holding a hammer, he walks into his brother's room and without any mercy, breaks a talking piggy bank to get the money he needs. He goes out of the house to look for the ice cream truck and finds out they're already gone, deciding on ditching his quote-unquote friend. A few panels later, we find out that the flower person is making the kidnapped customers test the ice cream flavors, and we can see where Nyon has been this whole time. Lucid One is titled Only My Cats Understand Me, and it was put on the website on January 31st of 2015. We're informed of the following, Randall having some Ace Ventura look going on, a Furby which Randall found on the street, Luther having a regal themed coffin but sticking to a normal bed for sleeping, Nyon having six eyelashes and six fake whiskers, while Nyan has four of each. There's also a panel that says Diamond over here. The comic starts with a shot of Randall's empty chair at the dining table, along with an open box of pizza. Luther cracks perhaps his neck or back, or maybe both, and goes to check on Randall. In a deep slumber before his brother woke him up, he says that he was dreaming for fun, and Luther expresses slight concern regarding his actions. He is then told that dreaming for fun is just as fun as running on all fours, explaining how he goes to sleep. Luther is unimpressed with this, but agrees to having a dream with his brother. All comfortable in a queen-sized coffin, Randall asks if Luther is actually going to sleep because his eyes are still open. He hears back from his brother, telling him that he doesn't close his eyes until he's asleep. Randall grimaces at such reply, and while his glasses curl for whatever reason, says that he feels like he is sleeping next to a corpse. 
Luther doesn't take this lightly, calling himself a human, a fresh and cute human in fact. From all the racket, Nyan and Nyan show up, to which their master says they'll be able to calm down with a bedtime story. Nyan is now holding a book, where almost every word in it is meow. Luther then says that Nyan's hair is getting quite long. Randall realizes that his brother really doesn't close his eyes even while he's asleep, and goes to eat all of the pizza. In a dream, apparently, Nyan's hair has grown a lot and asks if Luther can brush his hair in real life. After Randall ate all the pizza and with the Furby he found outside near him, he's turned into a Furby as well, with California Girls by Katy Perry playing in the background. Lucid 2 is called I Need You and was uploaded to the site on February 16 of 2015. The comic starts with Randall turning into Coco Slape, having gained the power of thinking by simply living in the Ivory household. Drooling, the Furby asks Randall to take him to the other people in the house to turn them into slaves too, but instead, he bites him below his ear. A few moments later, Neon gets hungry and goes to the kitchen, only to have Coco thrown at his face from an ongoing fight with Randall. More seconds pass and Luther awakens from his slumber, saying that everyone is thirsty when they wake up. Luther goes out of the bedroom and finds Neon hissing at a seemingly dead Coco, while Randall is puking. He picks up Randall, not knowing it was him, and takes a look at his batteries. A few panels later, Randall is put in his coffin, being held by ropes. Some time passes before Luther opens the coffin, offering to help his little brother out of his cocoon. A black-haired Randall drinks water, almost forcibly, and then wonders where Coco is, seeing him motionless. Good night, sweet prince, he says, closing his eyes. He recalls how he felt finding him on the side of the road one night, and goes on to say that he couldn't control his new powers. Luther tells him to do the dreaming for fun thing again, before Coco opens his eyes once more. He says that, as long as he is not alive, he can never die as well. And so, Randall, wearing what appears to be a lab coat, puts Coco inside a jar so he doesn't cause any more trouble. On the last panel, we can see an alternate ending, where every member of the Ivory household is now a Furby. We also have this page asking what will we turn into if we could transform into anything, with a man saying he would like to turn into a dog since they're cute, and an old lady wanting to be an airplane to travel anywhere whenever she wanted, while her family feeds her. Last but not least, we have this portrait of Randall with an Apollo 11 shirt. Lucid 3 is titled Human Pet for the Dark Prince, releasing on March 14 of 2015. It has an original and alternate version, with the alternate comic just having more screen toning, some typo fixes, and overall a better look. We are informed of Randall giving off the appearance of a dorky shit, but still being capable of stealing your eyelids while you sleep. Luther believing in lob above all else in the world, Nian beating the shit out of anyone who doesn't flush the toilet, and Nyan's hat preventing him from drowning if he fell into the ocean. Luther goes to an adoption center, intending to bring a human back home. A lady takes him to see the different pets and humans that are available, pointing at one that just came in. He is visibly distressed, but is soon taken home by Luther. At the Ivory household, it is Randall's 15th birthday, and says he is running away instead of growing up. Luther then tells him he has one present left, and it's the human he just bought, wearing a black bodysuit. Randall then calls him Sebastian, middle name Tomato Smith, and last name Chicken Legs. The reason behind this is because of Randall's assumption that humans and chickens taste similar. Meanwhile, this clown character drools at Sebastian and Nian thinks of biting him. Luther comes back holding a cake with many candles on the top, saying no one is going to eat Sebastian before singing happy birthday in German. Once he is done, he tells his brother to blow the candles, and Randall spits his tongue out, shocking Sebastian. Luther gives Randall his tongue back as he notices the new pet feeling mentally fatigued. Randall wants to show him his dolls first, but is told you don't want him to die from lack of sleep, do you? We get a panel of Randall's dolls looking at Sebastian, perhaps, including Coco. The comic then finishes with Randall's desire of turning him into a great pet. Lucid 4 is called Sebastian's Dinner, being released on April 25th of 2015. For this comic, we are informed of Randall growing sharp teeth, while his other sets of teeth are all fake. Luther sounding the same while singing and talking, Nian being a skilled butcher, Nyan almost losing his head once and still having bad memories from it, Sebastian being a lost human, now turned pet, and Monte being chased by bears inside their dreams. The story begins with Luther wanting to make a nice dinner for Randall's new pet Sebastian, though he has lost sight of him. 
Hiding in a closet but seen by one of Randall's dolls, he is quickly caught and is about to be punished by his owner until Luther tells him he should help around the kitchen. He then performs a staff roll call, with Nian being the butcher and Neon playing the accordion. If you're already feeling uncomfortable seeing those eyes, don't worry, you're not alone in that thought. Luther is the main vocalist and chef, making his brother cut onions. He quickly notices his particular way of cutting things and tells him about the cat paw technique, as Randall stares at him with a strange face. He goes on to sing around the kitchen until a loud chop sound is heard, checking on Nian's fingers and finding them in their place. His fake eyes also come off in the process. Luther turns around to face Randall, seeing two missing fingers which bounce off the table, only managing to catch one of them. You might want to remember about this specific finger, since we'll talk about it in 20 to 40 minutes, I'm not sure. Luther asks his brother if he is dumb for not doing the cat paw technique, and asks Nian to cut a finger from the man inside the back he's holding, fixing Randall's hand. His middle finger supposedly acts on its own, insulting Luther, who tells him that he will sleep in the closet without having dinner. The person inside the back comes out of it, causing Luther to question himself, since he swore the man wasn't exactly alive when he found him on the road. The two have a brief and very human exchange, with Luther saying it wouldn't be okay to eat him now, as he is alive. The man tells him it's okay and asks for a beer, and after being told they don't have any, he gets up, needing to go home now. Randall asks if he wants his finger back, but the man seems okay without it. Because of the dinner not going as expected, Randall suggests going to Smile Diner. The moon shines bright and there is a werewolf in the parking lot as Randall and Sebastian look outside. The boy with glasses tells his pet to get a dish called Youth Smile Special Force Feed Edition, and shortly after that a pair of hooks go up to the sides of their mouth to obviously force the food into their mouths. Two hooks go into the doll's mouth as well, but they end up breaking it. At the end of the comic we can see Luther stopping one of the hooks from going into his mouth while Nian grabs it violently. Lucid 5 is called Inside Nana and was released on May 30th of 2015. This time we are told that Randall is a 15 year old boy who surely is red inside, and we can see some arrows pointing at how someone like him grows up. Luther's human friendly nature being reinforced, Sebastian having a lot to learn from the Ivory family, Nyan being ran over a lot and looking like a crash test dummy, Nyan holding a knife, and Nana, Luther's snake who lives in the basement. Sebastian is summoned by Nian, who wants him to look at the rankings in the house, being put in the lowest position. While he is explaining, he pinches his nose, stretching as he falls to the ground. Nian then tells him that considering his position in the house, he has to obey him and listen to everything he says, unless he is willing to go down with a fight. This seems to scare him to the point of wanting to escape, but is pushed to the side as he is blocking the entrance to the bathroom. We see a small Nian lifting up the toilet seat with his small hands, and... Oh. Nian comes out of the bathroom wielding a knife, intending to hurt Sebastian for not flushing. As they are running, Sebastian ends up crashing against Nian, while Nian trips over him. On the floor, he thinks of the things he'll do to Sebastian once he gets him. After escaping from Nian, Sebastian gets to a different place in the house, where heads are placed inside jars. One that looks like a friendly mouse exclaims, Oh, the snakey wakey as Nana, the snake person, creeps up behind him and eats him whole. Checking the freezer, Luther taps his fingers on the lid before seeing a bloated Nana. We get a shot from inside Nana, showing Sebastian accepting his fate, and seconds later, Luther's face is seen from a hole, which, don't worry, it is not that hole. Struggling to get out of the hole, he ends up being eaten by Nana as well. He goes to a specific spot to tickle Nana, expecting her to expel them from her stomach, but nothing happens. Soon, Luther accepts his fate just like Sebastian. Luther then picks up a bone from around her stomach, saying he'll be okay because he can still brush his hair with the bone. Seconds later, Luther bears his fangs, wanting just to buy from Sebastian, when all of a sudden, they are saved by the catman and Randall who caught Nana open. The tall man then compares this surreal experience to Pinocchio. Randall disagrees with them and with an extended nose, he says he is the real Pinocchio. He takes Sebastian back to his room and after making a protective wall out of plastic, I guess, he tells him that nothing can get him now, not even ghosts. He grabs a small horse by the tail and imitates the sound of one, telling him to sleep well. In a very friendly manner, a ghost shows up in the same room. Lucid 6 is titled Take Care and was put on the website on July 6th of 2015. Randall is wearing the hat of his dead mouse friend. Luther is stated to have human ears, but no one knows where they are. Sebastian described as soggy, Nyan's hat being strangely big, Nyan with blonde on his face, and the ivory household having some eyes open. 
Randall goes off to Sebastian, talking about a game they can play, consisting of pinning the tail on the donkey person, except the donkey suit is a living thing with teeth, and also happens to be screaming. Sebastian tells him he doesn't want to play with him today, and Randall offers to be the donkey for the first round. Sebastian spots a crucifix on the wall, and after still not agreeing to playing with him, he gets frustrated and decides to play Make a Mess Out of Sebastian with a fork. Moving the crucifix around as if to purge him, Randall expresses how he's gonna mess his pet up. It's until then that Sebastian snaps and throws a punch at Randall's face, knocking his glasses off and causing a nosebleed. He seems not annoyed by this, but rather interested, licking off the blood coming out of his nose. Luther shows up from behind, making a door creaking noise as he moves. He was there because he felt someone was in distress, to which Randall tells him no one is in distress. His brother tells him he should play carefully with people or else they'll break. Not giving Sebastian a break, Luther suggests gathering everyone to play a friendly game. On the next panel, we see Jim Carrey's face on the table, apparently, in a game where everyone pretends to be a dentist, removing all of the patient's teeth as they are sedated. If they happen to wake up as their teeth are being removed, it means they weren't loving enough. After explaining the game, Luther tells Sebastian to start and he expresses his doubts, suspecting his hand will be chopped off. The pet swiftly takes a teeth away from the face on the table, and Neon does too. Randall then licks his own fingers before pulling out another teeth. With a huge smile on his face, he slides over the face to his brother, and when he pulls one of the teeth... Oh boy, it screams loud enough to scare Nana. We can also see Nian about to deal with some mouse person inside the house, meowing at the scream he just heard. On the next panel, Randall is blushing as he bleeds from his ears. Luther is also blushing. Seemingly confused at what just happened, he looks at his own hands before walking away to his garden, saying his hands will be appreciated there. Randall throws away the Jim Carrey face and puts on the Ace Ventura soundtrack vinyl, preparing everyone else for a new game called Jim Carrey's Revenge. We see a shot from behind and then a bunch of ripped teeth and Randall's fang. Meanwhile, Luther is in the garden, tending for his anime-looking plants, appreciating how there's no screams there. In an extra page, we can see a four-panel comic of Randall watering plants outside. He finds an almost dying slug and decides to water it, bringing it back to life. They both look quite happy in the last panel, and of course, many more slugs move around him. Lucid 7 is named Peptop Peppies, and it was released on August 22nd of 2015. This time we are informed that Randall is in fact a person, but not a people. Someone named Biff wanting Luther to be their dom, and Sebastian being asked why he's a clown. Luther is on the couch watching some television, looking at a show about puppet heads. He calls Randall to tell him to come watch the show with him, but catches Sebastian trying to call 911. The tall man shows up behind him and takes the phone, explaining that since they have started coming alive, they haven't been able to call anyone outside, only people inside the house and ghosts. This here is an important panel, you might notice a slight opening on where Luther's quote-unquote blush marks are, and that's because those are his actual eyes. The more visible eyes on top are just his eyelids. Either way, Randall comes back home with snacks, and after saying how he ate sweet dirt, he finds Luther touching Sebastian's face, taking him away from his brother and kicking him in the face. Dressed up as a nurse, he goes to take care of Sebastian, saying he's okay now. Luther suggests he should sleep again. Inside a doll's mouth, Randall finds a bottle of Pepto-Bismol, I mean Pepitol, I mean Pepi-Lol. Randall tells Sebastian that he always feels good after drinking this, and they both have a little taste. On the ground, Randall stretches his legs to the point of them reaching the other room where Neon is. Luther tells him not to do that, as two of Randall's dolls chop his legs off. With a fully washed face and an upside-down crucifix, Randall and Sebastian lay in their coffins. Luther tells him that he has school tomorrow, so he has to shut his eyes and try to sleep. His little brother tells him that at this point he should pray to the good lord. After Luther closes the door while looking at them, Randall goes over to Sebastian's coffin and suggests staying up all night. At the dining table with his catman, one of them smoking by the way, Luther thinks about opening more eyes around the house to prevent Sebastian from escaping. He compliments the Catman and shows them a training suit that could work on Sebastian, seeing Neon blush in response. He then goes to the computer to order the suit, while Randall keeps talking to Sebastian. Neon smiles at this, Luther feels relaxed from having made the purchase, and Neon is high thinking of himself wearing a suit. Lucid 8 is called Go to School, and it was made available on the website on September 30th of 2015. For this comic, we are told that Randall is a bit of a hated person and that he likes nighttime. 
Luther, knowing if you've been good or bad, Nyon described as cautious, Nian described as mischievous, and Sebastian having attempted to escape. The story starts with Luther walking to Randall and Sebastian's room using a cane, finding his little brother looking fine as ever. He brushes his hair a little bit after he puts his glasses on, feeling excited because Sebastian is coming to school with him. Luther disappoints him by saying he just isn't ready for school yet and tells him to hurry up and eat his breakfast. While he's eating, Luther is seen reattaching Randall's legs and giving him an apple for his teacher. Still looking drowsy, Luther distorts his face to make him look better. Outside, Luther and Randall wait for the bus and eventually it arrives. He gets close to the bus and is told that no adult looking people are allowed. I should mention that this whole time Randall has been licking and biting his own face because according to him, good people taste good. After being dropped off at school, Randall heads into the wrong classroom, finding a bunch of smiling classmates, describing them as fake people. At the Ivory household, Luther finds himself building Sebastian's suit and asks his catman to hold him still. The apple that Randall brought for the teacher is now being eaten by what appears to be worms. Then a bunch of his classmates grab him and put him inside a cage, saying he belongs there as they pour some liquid on top of him. A scared kid comes into the classroom saying the fake people are out there consuming everyone in the school. Randall hides into the cage as the fake people break into the room. Just like The Walking Dead, they let Randall out of the cage and state that since he is not like the humans they just replaced or themselves, he'll make a good subject for their science class, being tied to a table and feeling unfazed at the thought of the fake people cutting him open. Back with Luther, he observes Sebastian with his now finished suit and after he says he just wants to sleep, he makes the entire suit roll into a ball at the press of a button. They all agree to prepare tea time before Randall arrives from school, and before walking away, Nian kicks Sebastian while in his Samus ball form. Having his chest cut open, we see Randall's insides is just the void where a few eyes come from. He tells the people that they still haven't found the cool stuff, because Jack Nicholson, his spirit animal, is inside some part of him. Lucid 9 is called Pumpkin Party, and it was put on the website on November 13th of 2015. On this comic we are informed of the following, Randall being a boy thirsty for knowledge, curiosity, fun, but also our blood, Luther's blush marks being the real girl, Nyan being a Russian catman with three eyelashes on each eye, Nyan not being too fond of pumpkin carving, and Sebastian being on a roll. The comic starts with Luther looking for good pumpkins to take home. The farmer there tells him to leave immediately, causing Luther to turn his neck 180 degrees. Nian holds the farmer steady as Luther inserts his fingers into his skin, perhaps killing him. Luther comes back home and finds Randall sleeping in his room in such a way that he finds adorable. He tells him that he brought plenty of pumpkins for everyone to carve. With everyone gathered at the table, Luther wants his catman and Randall to carve the best pumpkin, and some panels later, Randall finishes his own, calling her Gretchen although he mentions something about her needing a body. He goes over the possible bodies for his pumpkin, calling Nian's body strong and Nyan's body making her more easy to overcome. Luther tells him to stop wasting time since his pumpkin isn't even finished. Randall hears this and says how his big brother's body is the only thing she needs to be complete before tripping over and breaking the pumpkin. He goes to talk with his brother asking for a new pumpkin and is told that if he wants a new pumpkin, he should find one himself, which causes him to eject his teeth and eyeballs, saying he is the cutest pumpkin. Luther denies this as he is the cutest pumpkin, detaching his head from his body and making this a competition. The Ivory family is still at the table, with Luther and Randall's head set on top of it, along with two other pumpkins. Seeing his brother's head full of flies, he decides to give this competition a fair ending. Whoever says they're the cutest wins, and we see Luther winning. Luther 10 is called Werewolf, being released on March 20th of 2016. Randall is described as a young man with sharp teeth, prone to biting your knee if he gets really excited. Luther entering other people's dreams if he wants to, Nyan being the type of guy to help you out of a forest, Nyan being the total opposite, and Sebastian having a heart of gold and a body of silver. The story begins with Luther walking back home from the store, carrying his groceries, when all of a sudden, a dog person bites his leg, shooting him immediately. The dog runs away as Luther begins turning into a dog himself, growing ears and a tail. Soon enough, his hands turn into paws and he howls at the moon, going back home. At the table, Randall mentions his big brother has turned into a wolf, but he denies it. Nyon gets close to him and is chased around the house, running in four legs. Considering how a dog cannot be the king of the house, Randall realizes he is now the king, 
as his dolls gain strength and takes away Luther's remote control for Sebastian's suit. He goes to his room and tells Sebastian he's gonna get him out of that ugly suit, though he triggers some buttons that are clearly not getting him out, as we can see him bleeding on this panel. The hours pass until a new day begins, with Randall sitting in a throne as Neon brings him tea. He mentions how it tastes like his brother's favorite tea, and with a finger snap, Neon is taken away. Sebastian is now Randall's assistant as he is checking his stocks, mentioning how both of them have gone up. Some panels later, he switches to a camera footage of his brother, still turned into a dog. Randall then asks for a bath, as Neon is consumed by a ceiling full of faces. Over at Luther's place, Nian approaches him and reads the word help from the drool dripping off his mouth. Knowing what to do, the catman goes outside into the forest as the sun begins to set. At the bathroom, Randall talks to Sebastian, wanting him to feed Luther as he is going to take a while in the bath. Running through a hallway full of doors with mouths, he is grabbed by one of the tongs, dragged into Luther's room. He comes out of his little dog house as the door closes behind Sebastian. Coming back to Nian, he finds the dog person Luther tried to shoot, along with another person who has turned into a dog. Perhaps on purpose, Nian steps on a slug and alerts the two people in the forest. In unison, Luther goes back to his normal human-looking form as Nian stabs the dog person multiple times before cutting his head off. The other human goes back to normal as well. Seeing how Sebastian got out of his training suit, a stressed Luther holds a hot dog, willing to turn him into one. Randall, with black hair, comes out of the bathroom and realizes Sebastian just ran away as he finds his brother back to normal. He then breaks the camera using Sebastian. Luther breaks into the room like Oryx from Siege, saying he is not mad at his brother, kicking him in order to gain his place back. Randall accepts stepping down as he feels more comfortable being the queen of the house. His brother reassures him, saying he might be king one day. As they are having tea, the dog person's head tries eating Sebastian as a hot dog. Randall grabs him like a baby, and after promising his brother he won't escape, he feeds him some milk. Lucid Eleven is called Haunted House, being put on the website on October 30th of 2016. We are told here that Randall is usually seen with blood splatters, but his clothes absorb them. Luther not liking Duke Nukem, Neon being white and a fan of good bats, Nian turning off your Nintendo 64 while fighting Shadow Link, and Sebastian still as a hot dog. For those who are curious, this right here says human fucker. Randall is in his bedroom checking his many dolls, mentioning how they have been quiet lately. He turns around and looks at Sebastian, seeing him completely exhausted, before sitting in front of the television to watch some movies. Adding something to his tea, Luther spots his little brother going somewhere and calls for him, noticing his undone clothes from here, while Randall notices his new eyelids. As he makes him come closer, he fixes his shirt, saying it annoys him. Randall tells him he is going to a haunted house, and Luther asks why as one of his eyelids falls into the tea. Under the excuse that being scared is fun, they agree on going to the haunted house as a loving family, and they do. At the entrance, there's a hole that says, insert a finger here, and they force Neon to be the first one, Randall feeling disappointed that it only drew a bit of blood. After that, everyone sticks their finger in to get more blood drawn, opening the door. Randall here expresses what he would like to do if he got too scared, though his brother tells him to just hold his hand. Randall thinks to himself about the chance of bringing somebody home, perhaps to make them his twin. Some moments later, Luther tells him to look at something, finding a bunch of captured humans inside the house. Luther and Nyan walk past the cage, but Randall sticks his hand out to the humans before being stopped by Nyan, who points at the do not touch sign. The rest of the family keep walking along the halls, feeling quite uninterested until they find a hole to go through, with Randall comparing it to giving birth or an infection. After coming out like a noodle, Luther rearranges his bones and muscles back to normal. He turns around and prepares himself to scare the catman and Randall, but is left waiting, as everyone went a different path. Someone behind the walls tries to scare Randall, but as usual, he is unfazed by it. Neon then shows up bleeding, apparently wounded by someone pretending to be Michael Myers. Randall takes matters on his own hands as he pulls a pair of scissors, and Neon runs away. Neon walks through a hall full of nooses before a hanged person shows up before him, he simply shoves them aside. Having made it to a different room, the catman loses it as he sees a vacuum cleaner coming his way, causing him to scream. Luther, going through what seems to be a hospital-themed room, notices his eyelids fell off somewhere. Eventually, he arrives to a different room with a skull on a pole. He glances at the skull and punches it out of the way, wanting to leave already. 
Now wielding a pair of crook scissors, Randall cuts a finger off from the Michael Myers person, who then gets up and rips his overshirt with a knife. They try to pin Randall against the wall with their blades, but gets their eyes stabbed, falling to the ground. As Randall prepares to cut Myers piece by piece, he removes the mask, revealing a person with long hair. Randall turns into a small creature and raises his paw before running away, being told that is against the rules. After getting out of a room full of dead people, Luther finds his family waiting for him, Randall still being a small creature and Jan chuffing back a fat dart. He tells them that he's not wasting any more of his blood tonight and wants to go home. At the ivory house, Ethereal Q is harassing Sebastian as a hot dog, but moves out of the way as Randall arrives. He shows him the finger he cut from Myers, now with a face drawn on it, and he goes back to sleep. Lucid 12 is called Randall Eats Out, and it was put on the website on January 15 of 2017. For this comic we are informed of Randall being the heroine of the story, being capable of destroying spoons in a lot of ways, Luther's lips not moving that often, Nian's favorite alcoholic beverage being Red Dog Beer, Nian described as a pacifist who wouldn't hurt a mouse man, and Sebastian still being confined to a pot in the shape of a hot dog, though he'll be released soon. The story begins with Luther pouring milk in a glass before going to Randall's room. He gets close to Sebastian and feeds him the milk, but quickly realizes the milk was for Randall, asking his pet of his whereabouts. Sebastian tells him to return him to his normal body, and Luther agrees to do so only if he tells him where Randall is. At the cemetery, Randall is digging up someone's grave, someone by the name of Winston Hansen, dead at 16. Nian creeps up behind him and covers his mouth as Luther finds him. He is then told to let go of him, saying Sebastian told him where he was. In reality, Randall was only going for a simple walk until he found Winston's gravestone, saying he could hear him. Luther tells him he shouldn't do things like this. He is brought to the car and they start driving back home, with Nien behind the wheel. Randall points this out, saying they shouldn't let someone losing half their face to take the wheel, and thinking of how painful it will be to die in a car accident before asking his brother a would you rather question. Oh hey, it's that fast food girl. What was her name? Uh, Randall asks if they can order at the drive-thru, and some panels later, they drive slowly over a raccoon person. A lady speaks from inside, and Luther asks his brother what he'll order. Quickly enough, he orders an interesting meal. Luther interjects, saying he'll get the kid's meal and stopping the fast food girl from eating Randall. He looks down at his meal and takes off his gloves, seeing filth spreading throughout his skin. Luther replies back, putting new eyelids on. Randall picks a fry with his two fingers while a Godzilla-looking toy sits beside him. The fry falls from his fingers and is absorbed by the car. The family comes back home and Luther brings some food for Nyon, a small hamburger. The catman sniffs it and starts to cry. At Randall's bedroom, he is seen holding Sebastian in his arms, asking Luther if he could return his pet back to normal, and he seems to agree. Lucid 13, Body, released on November 24th of 2017. This time we are informed of Randall being a young man wanting to make more friends. Also likes cutting hair, but dislikes having anyone cut his. Luther liking the darkness but wanting to do good, Nyan being wary of ghosts, Nyan taking care of his body and liking shows such as Judge Judy and Cops, and Sebastian being altered so much since he started living in the Ivory household. Nyan is lifting weights while watching the television, Nyan walks along the hall with some chips and toilet paper, but after seeing Nyan, he goes away. Randall is sleeping inside his coffin, but no longer holding his pet, as he is sitting with Luther, who can't remember where he put this body. He tells him not to worry, as he has another body he could use. He goes down to the basement and looks inside the freezer, but nothing is there, other than Nana licking his eye. He goes to his bedroom and finds plenty of things scattered on the floor. On one of the many hallways of the house, Neon looks at his reflection in a window, spotting a hand behind him before he is kissed on the cheek by a thorough cue. He tries running away and passes by the TV room as Nian sees him. For some reason the show cuts the static too. Finally, he arrives with Luther, who is holding an axe. He notices the ghost chasing Nyon and tells him not to do that, before inserting his fingers into a thorough Q's skin, reducing him to a small ghost and leaving behind the body. Randall takes off the coffin slit and rates his sleep, going on a rant about whether being buried or cremated is better. He also spits a tonsil stone. He keeps talking about this, wanting to ask Sebastian about it, finding him asleep in his coffin. Once again, he spits another tonsil stone. Looking at the hairstyle Luther gave him, Randall pulls a pair of scissors and tries to cut his hair. This obviously causes Sebastian to wake up, but not for long. 
Once he goes back to sleep, Randall uses his scissors again, and we can see some blood dripping from them. On this last page, Randall is still talking about whether being buried or cremated is better, and with the help of an Ouija board, he asks which is better, being told that mummification is the way to go. Lucid 14, It's Those People, April 25th, 2018. For this comic, we are informed of Randall wanting to die one day, as well as wanting to be contained in a magic crystal. Luther's skill consisting of hijacking a person's core through his fingers, Nyon coming back every single time something happens to him, Nyan being called a mean bitch, willing to kill people in real life and end their dreams, Sebastian suffering from a bad haircut, and Nana consuming when she feels like it, also being shy. The story begins with Nyon resting on the floor while someone talks on the television. He is startled by loud knocking on the door, and Luther goes to see who it is, finding some bones on the floor as well as a couple of flies. The knocking grows violent, as we can see a bloody at knuckles almost scraping the door. He opens the door and stares at two mysterious people looking for Randall. Luther lies and says he's not home. One of the people asks for their name and their knowledge about God, to which Luther replies in a particular way. They mention how the one true God doesn't need blood, and the tall man decides to give them what appears to be an eye, including the optical nerve, but decorated as if it were Luther. Randall and Sebastian are playing Diddy Kong Racing on the Nintendo 64, until Luther comes in to tell him about the spilled bones, and asks if he has made any new friends. He says he has made none, and mocks Sebastian for not being able to play correctly. Luther is boiling some water now, and after the two people from earlier drop the tall man's gift, they knock on the door once again. Luther chews on his skin while this happens and goes to see who it is. Feeling fed off from how stubborn they are, he tells them Randall is dead and is giving a pamphlet about accepting someone's death. After processing their words, he invites them in and lets them take a seat, as they ask Luther what his opinion on death is. Randall crawls behind Luther but hides quickly as he goes to make more tea. Now under the couch, Randall comes out and greets the two people, seeing them with a hole in their face and losing consciousness. They talk to him about joining them, as he will make lots of new friends if he does. He accepts this without hesitance. One of them gets up and tells his colleague their job is done, but Randall asks them if they want to have a sleepover. They decline his offer, and Randall's demeanor shifts, saying things like, you may die before the next time I see you, and I regret not keeping a part of my friends so they're never gone. Neon sighs and Luther checks on his tea, moving over to the living room. Randall looks at his hands, holding one ear and the slice mouth of one of the two people, having left the house earlier. Luther questions him about this, asking to see his hands. Outside the house, the two people walk along, one of them holding the side of their head from having their ear cut off and the other having no lips anymore. They speak about how suffering will guarantee them a place in their god's paradise. On this last page, Randall is rambling about being buried, cremated or mummified, and when asking his brother about what he thinks, he just tells him to open his eyes. There's also a drawing here of Randall eating something while someone calls out for him. Lucid 15, Dark Constipation, released on July 25th of 2018. This time we are informed of Randall, who is now 17 years old, described as an aggressive friend who will call you all day despite having nothing to say. Danger level regularly high and best to avoid him between 6pm and 3am. Luther being the kind of person to put 11 blankets on you. Neon feeling calm while listening to winter songs and video games, there is also something mentioned about pets resembling their owners, with Sebastian resembling… The story begins with Randall coming back home from playing with his pals, taking off his gloves and shoes before dropping into his coffin, sleeping for an unknown amount of time. Randall goes to the bathroom and spits out some black liquid on the sink, and observes his fingers, having no fingernails yet. In his attempt to let it all out, he drinks from a glass nearby and starts reading from a book that looks like human bits stitched together. Everything seems to go well until someone taps on the door, causing Randall's effort to go to waste. After not receiving an answer, Nyon goes into the bathroom but immediately gets out after seeing Randall. He takes the glass he drank from with him but soon drops it, falling to the ground as he starts to disintegrate and melt into black fluid but all is well in a matter of seconds, as he sees the bathroom free again. Randall parks his ass back onto the toilet seat, as Sebastian hides in the bathtub with a pair of scissors. Eventually, Randall gets rid of his constipation, seeing unsavory bits of extra teeth, intestines, and even pieces of his spirit animal, Jack Nicholson. After all is done, he goes to wash his hands and his eyeball, as a hand scratches the door from below. 
Quickly growing tired, Nian punches the door and opens it, standing behind Randall. He tells him that the bathroom is unusable, as he has to wait for Jack Nicholson to decompose a bit so he can dismember all his work of art with a chopstick for easier flushing. Nian hears this but remains silent, deciding to walk away. In the end, Randall speaks to the viewer like it's a commercial, saying how constipation can ruin your day until it's over. Having turned into a small creature wearing a cowboy hat, Randall goes back into his cozy coffin, only for Luther to call him for lunch. On this last page, we can see a black-haired person experimenting four different ways to die, like being killed with a chainsaw and a falling elevator, through hypothermia and from an exploding sun. Randall, on the other hand, seems to rest easily. On this other page, we can see more illustrations of characters such as Luther, Nyon, Randall, Nana, the dog person, and the curse. Lucid 16, $1 game, released on December 23rd of 2018. For this comic, we are informed of Randall getting stronger the longer he exists, even though he's just rotting inside. His favorite Christmas movie is Little Drummer Boy. Luther likes to stay home a lot, and his favorite Christmas movie is Jingle All the Way. Nyan here is revealed to be from Russia and can sleep forever if not interrupted. His favorite movie is the same as Luther's. The story begins with Randall and Luther in the car driving to the mall. He mentions the car being nice before taking off his seatbelt and tries to start a conversation. He turns his head around and finds Nyan is coming along too, making him smile. The three of them arrive at the mall and Luther tells his brother to go somewhere else as they are buying him presents for Christmas. Randall walks away to a different part of the mall, stumbling upon a claw machine with a small human inside. He inserts the coin to play and attempts to pull the human out, failing in the process. Luther says Merry Christmas to the manager of the store twice and teleports to where Randall is, seeing him play with a claw machine. After a few moments, he hands him his coffee and decides to give it a go telling his little brother to stop clenching the inside of his mouth as he can hear it. Luther aims the claw at a human's neck, which may or may not have killed them. He also mentions something about weaknesses, making Randall question his big brother's true weakness. The doll goes through a tunnel and is grabbed by Randall, thanking his brother. He holds him in his hands and gives him the name of Gilbert Luther the Seeroth. Seconds later, his brother asks just how much money he spent on the game, saying he only used $3. Luther then tells him to move on, as they still have to get Sebastian's presents. On this page, we see the Ivory family enclosed inside this section of the mall, with Randall saying that Christmas sucks. Over here, we see the many forms Randall can take as a paralysis demon. I like this one a lot. Which one is your favorite? For the last page, we see Randall performing in front of an audience, telling them how they have done fuck all for Christmas. Also, this Randall ball with coins on the floor. Lose It 17, Rat Problem. It was released on May 5th of 2019, and it's the start of a long arc. For this comic, we are informed of the following. Randall still running away and having an unlimited collection of dolls with things inside of them, Nian killing not just for survival, but to keep his skills sharp as well, Luther's hairstyle described as being popular around the 60s, also being a very weird person who tries to be normal, Sebastian no longer having his original body anymore, Neon being capable of watching any TV show from start to finish, and the Rat Man, whose right eye looks as if it's crying but it's just an error. The story begins with Nian sitting on top of a table, reading a novel titled My Alter Ego is a Turtle God Who Loves My Ex-Boyfriend, while Neon and Randall are at the living room. Randall seems to be playing a Nintendo 64 game about George Costanza getting grounded, to which he calls him Best Girl. We get a panel of Luther in his bathroom sleeping, feeling slightly uncomfortable if we go by the expression on his face. Moments later, we see the basement as Nana shows up with a brand new look. She tries to slither outside the door, making Nian turn around and walk away, passing by a hall of hovering dolls. Behind the walls, there's a crying person, sitting on perhaps a bed of hay. Randall now sits on the corner of the room, holding his own eyeballs and scrubbing them, while Nian tells him not to look at him. The TV shows a screen saying the end, along with a warning sign, before cutting to static and a constant high-frequency beep noise, causing Randall to pass out. Behind the walls, the rat man looks at his surroundings, laughing for a bit, then losing his temper, pulling on his face. Nian walks along many hallways, sensing something wrong nearby as he sees a chicken with a human head passing by. He goes to the living room and finds Nian and Randall, who is now scratching the wall and making cow noises. 
The catman gives him back his book and goes away without saying anything. Counting the many dots over the walls and ceiling of his room, the ratman complains about his empty stomach. He then moves through a pipe and heads to the kitchen, seeing another ratman sitting motionless. He comes out of a crack in the wall, finding a bag of chips on a table. He takes the bat with him, along with the other stuff, and as he prepares to leave, Nian spots him and steps on his tail, preventing him from moving. He explains how his master has been stressed because of Christmas, and is willing to take matters on his own hands, pulling out a knife. The ratman's tail twitches as it detaches from his body, giving him a chance to move back into the wall as he kicks Nian in the face. He talks to himself about how he doesn't have to go outside anymore with all the food he got, drinking from a can of beer. Another ratman pops out of a pipe, who yells at him about how he shouldn't be born yet. Three more ratmen show their faces as the original one begins to sweat. Somewhere in the house, Randall is sitting and smiling, wanting quite literally to see as he is missing an eyeball. On the last pages, we get a description of the ratman, who is described as similar to Luther for crawling through extremely small spaces. Over here we have Randall sweating and looking to the side, saying something about rewinding. There's also this slightly convoluted page of thought patterns before materialization, with black and white waves, flashing colors, and then just worms. Randall mentions how this takes him back, though the Ratman says that's their materialization process. Lucid 18, rap problem but with multiple exclamation marks. Released on August 5th of 2019. For this comic we are informed of the character's eyeball type, as well as the role in the story, with Randall being described as the protagonist with classic eyeballs. He also has an unstable thinking process and doesn't have many friends. Nian has either master-style eyeballs or bedroom eyes. Luther has Sampaku eyes and is a tired prince. There is also mention of his eyes being open, but we already know where his real eyes are. The Ratman has real eyes behind a Kigurumi-style skin and was born behind the walls. The story continues with Randall sitting on the floor, thinking to himself, while Sebastian tries to defend himself against his owner's dolls. Another doll emerges next to Randall and he rips an eyeball out of her. He tells a story about a beautiful girl who died in the fall, re-emerged in spring before coming back as a beautiful girl again in the summer. He inserts the eye he just pulled into his own eye socket, regaining his sight. Randall then threatens Nyon, saying he wants to split his head as it looks like a melon. He of course runs away and Randall steps out of the living room to find a bunch of mangled dolls on the floor. Nyan stumbles upon his fellow Catman, and he just walks away from him. Nyan is scratching the wall to see where the Ratman is hiding. The rats behind the walls are chatting, with one mentioning how they can't leave the nest since there's food. Another one talks about a Catman outside wanting to kill them, while another rat steals a can of beer. Not catching a break, the original Ratman is bitten by another rat, dropping his can of beer. All of the Ratman share his pain, as the one with glasses says the TV guide might have some information about it. He pinches his forearm, and once again, everyone else feels it. One of them tells him to stop before smashing his head in an attempt to make him feel pain too. Surprisingly, the Ratman notices how he felt nothing. He thinks about the question regarding him being born early, and asks him about it. The Ratman mentions him asking twice, hinting at them being able to read minds or perhaps sharing the same brain. The Ratman starts imagining a scenario where they all team up to kill Nian, going through his nose and left eye before eating him from inside. He snaps out of his daydream, saying that dying a natural death won't be possible with Nian around. The other Ratman agree on having him as a leader, which causes him to want a name, calling himself present day problem Takeuchi Robert. The rest of the Ratman proceed to use the two brain cells left in their heads, while Takeuchi tells them he'll think of names after he wakes up. Over here we see Sebastian trying to move through some bends, but ends up falling because of a ghost, landing in a room full of pipes and being found by his owner. He talks about treating him better from now on, like giving him baths and feeding him often, he also mentions his strings being touched by rats, wanting Sebastian to come along with him. He answers positively, which took Randall by surprise, and knocks the scissors off his hands. On one of the last pages, we can see Howdy's commentary about a real-life situation. 
Lucid 19, Birth, Life, Death, Rat Infinity. Released on January 25th of 2020. We are informed of Randall having a lot of enthusiasm now, Sebastian having attempted to escape the house, Luther being selfish as he wants his own character box despite not doing anything so far, Nyan still on this mission of eliminating Ratman for his master, Nyan being already quiet, and Nana shedding recently but not being able to open doors that well since she doesn't have hands. As for the antagonist, we are told that Takeuchi's body got split into four different forms, but despite this, he really is alone. The Ratman with X ears doesn't have a name, but is the rowdiest. The one with glasses tends to read TV guys and it says his ears are constantly moving patterns. The rat with the third eye isn't anything special as his extra eye doesn't give him any powers. Last but not least we have this other Ratman who is just as quiet as Nyon. Before the story begins, we are treated with a sort of commercial featuring Ethereal Q, stating he'll always be there for you as long as you eat your flakes. Randall finds a small hole in the wall and tries getting inside after turning into a small creature. Uncapable of sliding through, Sebastian remains there without saying anything, making Randall say, I know what kind of person you'll be in school. His stomach growls and Randall mentions how he'll just die if they don't find rat liver. His hair starts to rise and turn into neurons, saying it's information flooding his mind. He thanks Sebastian for helping him get an idea on how to get the rats out of the walls and offers him a larva to eat. He actually eats it, saying it's not too bad. Behind the walls the Ratmen are playing cards, as Takeuchi awakens from his slumber. He comments he doesn't feel that rested after all. The Ratman with X ears asks if he has thought of a name for him. He replies with ID or it, and he strangles him. His stomach growls as well and the other Ratman pulls a finger that was crawling around their nest. Remember that finger Randall cut off? Well, here it is, finally. Takeuchi notices someone is missing and is told that they send the quiet Ratman outside to bring back something for them since he lost. With a drastic change of plans, Takeuchi tells the rest they have to get out. In the hall, Randall and Sebastian talk about their plan, having set a decoy cheese to lure out the rats. They go up some stairs in an unconventional way and soon enough they find a Ratman on the floor. Randall gets close to the rat to see if he is actually asleep but finds out his torso is ripped apart with no signs of his organs left. Nian hears Randall behind the wall holding a handsaw. At the kitchen, Nian is trying to choose what to eat as a snack with a bunch of the items inside talking to him. The rat men look at him and argue if it's the same catman who's been killing them. Doing a horrible job at not being found, they are discovered, with Takeuchi stabbing him in the chest but also getting a glass of milk to the face. The other rat man stabs his body, going through his hand and neck, but he still manages to move his body, earning him more stabbings. Takeuchi tells his people to take his eyes and eat what they can, while the rat wearing glasses notices a bag being rolled on the floor. He gets close to the back to inspect it as Nian creeps up from behind the three-eyed rat man, strangling him with Takeuchi's detachable tail. They both disappear into the dark hall. Takeuchi starts to feel like things are different, perhaps from feeling another rat man's pain as they are part of his body. The rat man with X ears prepares to leave everyone but is caught by Randall, who after looking at his ears, knows it's just another rat infestation. On this last page we get to see some of Randall's most important features, like his hair, his fang, and of course his glasses. Over here, well, we can see his gloves. Lucid 20, A Great Day, released on February 29th of 2020. For this comic we are informed of Randall facing the wrong way, Sebastian having that name to strike feelings of classiness, Nyon being a victim of rat violence as he is full of holes, Nian wearing a mask when hunting sometimes, Nana currently being in a weird space of the walls, and Luther also wearing a mask, especially when sleeping. For the antagonist, we have Takeuchi Robert and some dialogue about needing a proper brain to move things properly. X ears Ratman telling you things will be okay and that you should enjoy yourself while you can, and Glasses Ratman telling us about nothing being more fun than reading TV guides. Three eyes and quiet Ratman were taken out by Nian. Rest in piss. The story continues with Randall standing in front of the Ratman. After looking at him, he says he cannot harm him, as he is a little too cute, so he makes Sebastian do it. He grabs and pulls on the rat man's tail, causing him to fall to the ground. He tells his pet his knife is in his pocket, so while he holds the rat's tail, he can kill him. Upon hearing the word pet, the rat tries to reason with Randall, telling him he could also be his pet, as he is cute and is capable of doing cute things. 
Trying his hardest to convince him to spare his life, Randall tells him he is not ready to take care of a mouse yet. He argues that replacing his pets is not something he does, before pulling his knife out. Trying one last time to save himself, he points out how Randall just said mouse, even though he's a rat. Randall recognizes this, but disregards it immediately. Sebastian goes to the kitchen to look for some knives as Randall gets ready to cut the ratman open. While the knife is close to piercing his skin, he realizes something. He agrees on making a deal with the Ratman, consisting on sparing his life only if he shows him where the other rats are, as well as help him capture them. Randall also mentions how giving Sebastian more than one liver might give him a new ability. They both shake their hands and agree on feeding themselves. The Ratman then looks at the hole to their nest, now being covered by a doll who he tried to eat. He gets scared by Randall offering him a beer shortly after. Neon tries to get back up on his feet, but trips over the many beads spread on the floor. On his back once more, he looks up at Nian, who calls him a dumbass while the end from his shirt falls on his forehead. He hears Randall talking with the Ratman, finally giving him the name of Kinder Surprise Michael Jr. Nian tells his fellow Catman to move, or not, as he walks over him. We also see a panel of the three-eyed Ratman's corpse in the hall. Takeuchi looks at Nian from behind the wall, telling him to kill him already. Nian goes into the kitchen with only one thing in mind, exterminating the Ratman. Randall tries to hold him back, telling him they are on a temporary truce, but Nian breaks free and sticks his knife deep into Michael's stomach, slicing upwards and spilling his intestines out. Takeuchi runs towards Nian and trips over Randall's string, crashing into the Catman as he tries to move his blade towards his eye. While on his back, Nian grips the Ratman's hand and drops his blade, only then, Nian takes advantage and with his claws rips open his Kigurumi's skin, exposing his eye and showing through an entire panel the pain inflicted. He gives him his tail back, while Michael struggles picking up Takeuchi's weapon. Pulling his face back up, Takeuchi kicks Nian to make him lose balance and fall into the ice pick, piercing his left eye. Nian climbs over Takeuchi as they both grunt, all of this happening with Randall as the spectator. Sebastian decides to leave under the excuse of wanting to use the bathroom, to which Randall tells him he got the word of the day, as confetti begins to rain down. Like a TV program, Randall mentions how it's time for another message, while Takeuchi and Nian beat the shit out of each other. The dangers of leaving your holes open. This intermission shows us a rat person coming out of their nest but forgetting to close the entrance hole, so when they come back, they find what seems to be Luther and Randall in front of the hole. It advises rat people to sip the hole and mentions how a discovered rat is a dead rat, as Nian prepares to take the rat person out. The ceiling of the house rumbles, scaring Luther's new piggy bank. He gets up from bed after a long slumber. In a hall full of paintings, a pair of eyes can be seen as Nan observes the Ratman with glasses walking along. Nyan finds the Ratman and offers to show him the way out, though he is too shocked to even form a reply. Just like in the last chapter, we are treated to more points of interest, this time from Sebastian's, focusing on his freckles, his diamond eyes, and a fully black pupil. Zooming in for even more detail, Randall mentions Sebastian having an ivory sclera, iris of a subtle ash, and a masculine tear duct. Lucid 21, The Transition, released on April 30th of 2020. For this comic, we are informed of Randall's outfit origins, saying it's supposed to resemble a Gakuran, which is an old Japanese uniform inspired by a Prussian militia. Luther reacting in some way to people saying he looks like a corpse or a famous statue, Nian not being into the idea of Sebastian resembling him, Nana's situation in the house being compared to a concept from Hinduism about being between reality and non-reality, Nyan not talking much, and Sebastian being silly so he wears clothes that suit his personality. Also, he's really bad at video games. For antagonist, well... We can see here some artwork of every character in the arc so far. The story continues with Nyan and Takeuchi catching their breath as they're still fighting, while Randall thinks it's time for him to step in. He remembers no one can read his thoughts, so he repeats the statement aloud, causing Nyan to turn to him and warn him about stealing his kill. Randall lets Sebastian go to the bathroom before approaching the injured Catman. Not willing to put up with him, he grabs him by the neck as he kicks Takeuchi back to the ground. Randall teases Nian about his remaining eye before he shakes him around. The rat man grabs a spoon and immediately goes for his right eye, managing to scoop it out. Randall gets off of Nian and taunts him for what he tried to do, seeing his dangling eyeball move around. 
He looks at Nian holding his eye socket while Takeuchi is on the ground, mentioning how he'll need a hundred of his kind to kill the Catman. Back with the glasses Ratman and Nyon, the former runs away as he is too afraid to form a sentence. Behind the walls, Nana slithers at the Ratman's pace. Nyon speaks something in Russian, as the rat gets away from him, reaching a dead end. Or so he thinks, as a hole opens up on the door, a hole that very well resembles a mouth. Nyon tells him not to go inside, yelling Nyet so hard his brain is visible. The Ratman obviously doesn't listen to him and moves into the hole, crawling into Nana's mouth and meeting his death. Over here we get a map of Nana's labyrinth, looking much more complex. Back at the kitchen, Randall looks down at Takeuchi, grunting in pain while Nian tries to put his eye back in. He talks to the Ratman about how his brains must be pretty scrambled right now. Now seeing from Takeuchi's perspective, he finds a disfigured Randall grinning at him and speaking unintelligible words, all thanks to his damaged danger perception. He tries getting away from him until Luther appears. They both talk about how there seems to be an issue involving rats and that he should have been told about it. Takeuchi looks at them, begging to be killed, as he'll only come back again and again. Luther then pulls a syringe, which makes the Ratman kick him in the face. He mentions the mixture not lasting for long and asks Randall to help him put him outside. Randall tells him he needs to borrow something from inside Takeuchi, adding that you can still live with just one liver. This doesn't amuse Luther at all. Takeuchi is taken outside and walks into the forest without saying a word. Luther then questions Randall about his missing eye, showing he has one in his breast pocket. The rest of the page goes to tell that Takeuchi left the cycle of dying and reincarnating, becoming a sort of Scrudinger's cat. Randall tells his brother that he is too kind now and that he'll rather want the Ratman dead. He replies saying that he is evolving as a human, for even lowly creatures deserve respect. Luther goes to the kitchen and sees a horrible mess, cleaning things up with his vacuum cleaner. He tells his little brother he can help, though he tries getting out of it, stating he was not part of this at all. He gives up and takes the vacuum off of Luther's hands, saying he looks cuter when he cleans. He looks behind him at the dead rat man, getting scared. Randall mentions that Nian is responsible for killing Michael and starts to use the vacuum cleaner on Michael, making Luther's face slip down. He asks himself why no one told him about the rat problem, getting to the conclusion that perhaps he has been too intimidating. He goes on about how they all need to change, suggesting doing something together, like camping. The reason behind going out is that if no one leaves food and there is no food, then the rats won't show up anymore, to which his catmen agree. Randall instead asks about campsites commonly being used as murder sites, and his brother says they're not going to murder anyone. Over at the bathroom, Sebastian is having a really bad time, as his body didn't seem to enjoy eating live larvae. On the last pages, we get another special points of interest check, this time with Luther, pointing out his actual eyes, the lines of his skin, the 10,000 mile stare, and how he walks unexpectedly fast towards you, with boss music included. Over here we get some artwork of extra eyes on the walls, with Randall sleeping and Sebastian having some trouble, and this very sweet drawing of the Ratman having a good time somewhere else. So, that was Volume 1 of Lucid, now entering Volume 2. Lucid 22, that time I was reincarnated as Randall's hat and one of the times they try to go camping. The first part of this comic was released on May 27th of 2020 and the second part on June 30th of 2020. We are informed of Randall coming off as a bit odd but still having the same bowel system as Oz. Luther often staying in for the majority of time and saying he is a kind person wanting to work on that. Nian still healing and Nyon having used his 9 lives already. Over at the creatures page we see Sebastian described as still human but still wanting to leave the ivory household. Nana not minding the cold despite being a snake person and a carpet for whatever reason. The story begins with Randall and Sebastian in the room with Randall finding out his eyelids are really stretchy today. He realizes that he is actually bored. Luther comes into the room asking if they are ready as they are leaving soon. He sits on his coffin, slowly starting to develop a nosebleed. On the hallway, Luther keeps waiting on his brother and pet, asking if blood dripping off your body really does feel nice. Eventually they all go outside, with Randall asking where the truck came from. He gives him a concise and honest answer before they all climb in. 
Randall says some nonsensical stuff and makes weird noises as he and Neon see a mysterious person on the side of the road. They comment about it, but Luther isn't able to see anything. We get more panels of this person on the road, smiling at all times, as Randall falls asleep. Inside a dream, we see Sebastian waking up on his desk at the school, finding Randall introducing himself in front of the class. He spots Sebastian, saying they are in the same dream from falling asleep. He does the introduction part again, saying his favorite Tears for Fear song is Head Over Heels, how he's been crucified every year, what his favorite blood type is, and what he wants to be someday. He stops himself soon enough, though. They go out of the classroom, explaining that this is their dream and he wants Sebastian to see a special friend. Now in the cafeteria, Randall gets ready to have some food, feeling watched from behind. It is Luther, which means he also fell asleep in reality. He tries to make him believe he is just a conglomeration of thoughts, not wanting to admit he is actually asleep. Randall says he is not going to end the dream right there, as this is his revenge for not letting Sebastian go with him to school. Luther takes this in the wrong way and summons another version of him, closer to his normal everyday image. Randall tells Sebastian not to worry, and they go somewhere else. Soon, the lights are out, and we see Luther killing a girl product of Randall's dream. Luther stands in a hall with a few corpses, wanting his little brother to just wake up. Sebastian's thoughts become vocal, and Randall notices this, remarking how he wants to enjoy the dream with his pet for as long as possible. He breaks a wire fence with his fingers, saying how everyone wanting to leave this dream might make him the bad guy. A bird comes flying holding a box cutter and drops it right on Randall's head. He looks at the object, knowing his special friend is nearby, and he shows up. It's Satoru Tsukara, the boy from another layer. Since he is a dream entity, this is his reality, and he expresses wanting his friend to stay as long as he can. He comes up with a plan consisting of booting out Luther the same way he is trying to boot them out of their dream. They both smile. On the last page, we can see perhaps one of Randall's forms, named Holy Randall. What's interesting is that the higher the percentage is, the less you can comprehend him. The Hermit and the Moon, released on August 20 of 2020. For this comic, we are informed of Randall enjoying having dreams while he is supposed to go camping, wanting to have a fun school life in the dream plane. Satoru liking box cutters and maybe phones, cameras, and trains. Sebastian looking good in anything he wears, and Luther just wanting to go camping and strengthen bonds with everyone. Here we see some nice artwork of Randall, Satoru, and Sebastian. The story continues with Randall and Satoru looking at their weapons, which include a knife, box cutters, and a tomato. Sebastian makes a sort of logical question about how Luther could be killed, to which Randall picks up a flaccid knife and starts to explain. He spaces out for a second though, as he is going through an ass cramp in reality and inside the dream. Randall goes over how you can't do much against the one malevolent being chasing you in a dream, making Satoru the right person to deal with such being, as his anime eyes are incapable of feeling fear. Sliding into the dream, Neon finds himself in front of Luther and joins them. On the rooftop, they stomp on the ground, causing the building to shake with Luther and Neon inside. Two dream entities show up, mentioning how Randall doesn't know them as they are from the future. Randall, Satoru, and Sebastian go somewhere else just as Luther reaches the rooftop, and soon the girls begin to attack them, with Avalona Mercury, the magic girl, dying first by Luther's axe. The younger-looking Luther states he doesn't like doing this sort of thing, as the other girl shows up as a spider. They don't interact much as Luther kills her immediately. He comments on how this violent and murderous form of him isn't representative of him in reality at all. He thinks about the only way he could be awakened and suggests being killed. Neon turns into a round creature and begins to smother the killer Luther, quickly being pushed off. He talks about how Neon must be killed so he can wake up and then wake up Luther. Swiftly, Luther takes a swing at Neon and he is taken to another part of the dream. A girl tells him about taking a number in order to leave and we see the two girls Luther killed some moments ago waiting. Luther drops to the floor and thinks about how he can leave, with his killer form holding a leaf. Somewhere else, Sebastian, as a bullwhip kelp, pulls himself out of the water, finding Randall and Satoru at a pool. He questions Satoru about why he keeps his clothes in the pool, being told that it will be weird to fight without any clothes on. 
Randall says how their current environment is a paradise, with Sebastian stretching his own mouth to perhaps wake himself up. Satoru suggests cutting his fingers to prevent him from leaving, with Randall saying pinching won't work. He dives into the water and Randall quickly notices Luther coming back, pulling everyone out of the water. Randall wonders if he is losing lucidity as his ability to flee is taking a while. On top of Luther's body, Satoru stabs his head multiple times, asking if everything's okay with Randall. He answers saying his fleeing ability is stuck, but soon it starts to work again. At a library, Luther comments on how Sebastian doesn't think this whole experience is exciting at all, trying to convince him with the things they could do by camping. He tells him not to move, as his face rips open. Satoru jumps at him and takes him to another part of the dream, arriving at a hallway full of box cutters stuck to the wall and ceiling. Luther tries reasoning with him, saying they all had plans to be somewhere already. Satoru disagrees, saying that nothing out there can be as good as the dream world, deciding on killing him as he moves the blade of his box cutter. Luther summons his killer form once again, as the comic enters a sort of cliffhanger moment doing questions to the readers about Luther and Satoru's fight and Nyon. Over here Luther is doing an angry face at Randall, to which Sebastian says, who cares, receiving a reply from a pair of government agents. On the last page we see Sebastian, Satoru and Randall turn into small potato-like creatures with a lot of health. Lucid 24, Breaking Kaleidoscope Pattern, released on September 29th of 2020. We are informed of Randall being completely deranged as he wants to stay in a dream about high school, Satoru being the kind of person who is really into his friend but rude to everyone else, Sebastian still having a bullwhip kelp body and mentioning how every part of it is edible, Luther's appearance being influenced and compromised, and Neon trying to wake up. Over here we have a bunch of versions of Axe Luther, as well as commentary by Howdy about how they were chased by him in a dream. The story continues with Randall writing down on papers, perhaps doing homework. Sebastian heads outside and starts to run away, with Randall following him. Back on the hall with Satoru and Luther, he tries to attack him with his chainsaw as Satoru turns into a smaller version of himself to dodge him. He throws two box cutters at his face as he slides between his legs, facing the younger Luther. He tells him about his regeneration, saying it's still something despite not being as fast before getting cut in half by the chainsaw. Leaving a pool of blood and guts, Satoru appears in the same waiting room where Neon is, going through the door with no problem and taking an elevator back to where Randall is. Walking through halls, he asks the dream people if they have seen Sebastian around, though it seems no one is really alive. Coming out of a locker, Satoru comes back, telling Randall about his fight with Luther. He says his plan is falling through, and suggests that if Randall goes to sleep inside his own dream, it'll be even harder for others to find him. As they're talking, Sebastian sneezes while hiding in another locker. The door is open and Sebastian falls into another room, or bonus room according to Randall. They all appear in a set of a variety show with another anime looking character as the host. Randall vomits before he goes to spin the wheel. The wheel then lands on a section where a huge man with a hockey mask grabs and throws Sebastian into a container, as the host tells Randall if he answers incorrectly, his pet will get gunned. The host then does the question, and Randall ends up giving the wrong answer, making the hockey mask person pour a bucket of perhaps blood into the container where Sebastian is. Through a television, both Luthers watch the show. Someone speaks to Luther among the men's body parts, and he asks if they even know who he is. The comic then goes into a bunch of artwork emulating an anime opening, until Randall starts to fade out, losing lucidity. Luther arrives to the set, and Randall tells his friend he can no longer teleport, as he is at the end of the rope. Satoru says that's because he is trying within the dream, suggesting he should stop existing in dream or reality, creating a void in the ceiling full of zeros while floating towards it. Satoru says he'll hold them off, wielding another box cutter before his arm gets caught off by the chainsaw. Randall looks down on Luther as his body starts to melt, eventually coming down and dodging Luther's chainsaw by extending his mouth. Satoru listens to more and more of Luther's words regarding the things one can do when camping, finally convincing him to end the dream. He goes with Sebastian and tells him to trade places with him. He talks about how life is inside a dream. Satoru warns Sebastian about watching his back from now on when he goes to sleep, before he and Randall are destroyed by Luther. The girl at the waiting room tells Neon he can leave already, as it's all over now. He goes out the door as everything melts.
Back to reality, Neon reaches over and smacks Luther's head to make sure he's awake. Randall then rates his dream, saying it was an 8 out of 10 with just the right amount of water. On the last page, we see an illustration of Nian at the wheel. Lucid 24.88, a hermit in dreamland, released on November 30th of 2020. This interlude chapter is a bit heavy, so be advised. The story begins with a detailed description of Satoru's name and what his species could be, before going to a panel of him finding what we can assume is Randall's carcass or a remnant of his dream self. He tells him this is better than nothing and invites him outside. He goes over the things they could have done if it wasn't because of his brother. They arrive at the club room, and Satoru puts Randall in a seat as he goes to prepare some tea for them. Eventually, he comes back with a cracked glass full of green tea, as well as a snack which he puts in his mouth. He talks about perhaps doing some club room activities, going through memories and seeing how the room they're in was used for the occult and computers. He looks under the table and finds a board to play Go, letting Randall move the black stones. Satoru travels through more places and memories, imagining how Randall will play the game as he moves his pieces. Satoru goes back to his seat as it is his turn now, and instead of moving stones, he sends them flying everywhere, saying there is no point in seeing this end. He talks about how weird it is for him to still exist despite everyone leaving his world, and how he always forgets about it until it's all over. He concludes that this is something good, as he is developing sentience, Satoru pulls his box cutter from his belt and starts cutting his hand, slicing a finger off while talking of how he is still capable of feeling, mentioning just how things could be out there in real life. He goes over possibilities of meeting Randall and his friends inside the dream, which are very minimal, but realizes that eventually anything is possible in any plane of existence, and everything will work out in the end. Satoru agrees that it's useless to be here any longer, and slices his own neck with the box cutter, awakening Randall's remnant as he starts feeding on his blood. Randall and Luther talk on how strange it is for a guy like Satoru to just want to come into reality, saying that grass is greener thing might just be real. Luther just replies with them seeing lots of greenery where they're going. On the last page, we can see a few illustrations of Tsukata after the rain. Lucid 25, On the Road, released on April 29th of 2021. We see this exclusive interview with Luther where he's asked if he will become a pirate, even if he had the chance of getting scurvy, to which he says anyone can get scurvy nowadays. The story continues with Nian driving over a bunch of traffic cones and Randall asking that specific question everyone does on a road trip. Meanwhile, in the back of the truck, Sebastian is attacked by some flamingos. Randall mentions the hitchhiker once more, with Luther not being able to catch them. Driving with a cone stuck to the wheel, the truck rumbles and shakes around, and Randall offers some food to Sebastian. Luther asks Neon if it's something that humans shouldn't eat, and it is, wanting to feed him a toy. Luther changes the subject, saying he wants to be sure nobody suffers from dehydration, while giving some water to Nana. He passes a bottle to Neon and Randall as the hitchhiker rapidly crawls towards the truck, banging against it. Luther comments about it and asks Neon to stop the car as the hitchhiker rolls around. He says he must help whoever is out there because he won't stop thinking about it otherwise. Randall taunts him about this and wants to go outside in case they have to take the person out. Luther says his catman can do it, but his brother says one of them can't even kill a fly and the other one isn't feeling well. In the end, he lets Randall come with them. His knife gets stuck on Luther's arm, as Nian also goes outside carrying a crowbar. He says that now is a chance to go to the bathroom so they don't waste any more time, before turning around and seeing Randall trying to open the back of the truck. Luther says he shouldn't let him out, as it would be sad if he got lost. Randall agrees with him on not letting him out, but still gives him some food. Nana goes out of the truck with Nyon inside her mouth. Moments later, they all get back in the truck and drive off, with the hitchhiker looking at them. Inside of the vehicle, Luther gets Randall's knife off his arm and puts it somewhere else instead of giving it back to him. Fully bored, Randall says he'll start biting his tongue, and Luther suggests playing a road trip game, casually naming a song. 
Eventually, they agree on playing I Spy, and Randall says they can see the hitchhiker again, showing their thumb in front of them on the road. They stop the truck and have the human catch up with them, as they talk about Luther wanting to help anyone as long as they're not rude, only killing them if they're assholes. The hitchhiker knocks on the vehicle's door, asking if it's fine to come in. On the last pages, we see some illustrations of Randall and a handwritten note from Howdy, which you can read here. Lucid 26, Hitchhiker x Hitchhiker, released May 31st of 2021. For this comic, we are informed of Randall being the second in command at the Ivory household and sometimes having trouble connecting with others. Sebastian being a hidden human, Luther being a man striving to improve himself and wearing rings because they make him look good, Nana and Nyon as one being, Nyan already having healed both eyes but not wanting to take off the eye patch, and Satoru over here just because. The story continues with Luther processing wanting to let the hitchhiker in with them, while Randall asks him a bunch of questions, pulling his window up and down. He tells everyone to just be on their best behavior since they're letting someone on, as Randall scratches the inside of his eye socket. Here we get a warning about the contents of this comic, which include coarse language and things being incorrectly filled in, all from the girls' benevolent society. Luther mentions something about the water he gave everyone hopefully working soon, turning around and explaining some things to the person outside before telling him to step back so he can open the door. He places his hand in front of him, telling the hitchhiker about some rules, which include no degenerate talking as they have a girl inside and a boy being a freak until they part ways. The third rule consists of just being good. Having said all that, Luther lets him in with them and they drive off. The hitchhiker talks for a bit as everyone clearly isn't showing their best behavior. Eventually, he comments on how the weather is a little off tonight, to which Luther replies. After that, it's quite visible how no one is comfortable with someone else among them. They keep driving along the long road, and we can see a sign that warns against picking up hitchhikers, as there is a killer in the area. With every passing second, Randall grows more and more scuffed, with his face turning dark. The stranger mumbles about something, and Luther gets him to talk again, saying how you don't see triplets every day, referring to Luther and his catman. He processes this and tells him they are not related at all. Randall starts a conversation with him, saying he is Luther's brother and his name is actually Ikeda Ren. He is questioned about his Jake hat, and he casually answers saying it belonged to someone who is not with Randall anymore, confusing the hitchhiker. He pushes a bit more, wanting to know his name, with Luther saying he doesn't have to do that. After being told that they are dropping him off soon, Randall makes sure to enjoy every second left. We get this panel where the hitchhiker thinks to himself about how these people are creeps, though he is the weirdest person on earth. A few knocks can be heard from the other side of the truck, which Randall says it's just Sebastian who has been learning Morse code. Randall then mentions how he can just show his sphinx eyes since they're friends. He is oblivious to this, and Randall then asks if he has any brothers. We see the person from before standing on the road and looking at a deer on the side. They mention how the person looks like he wants to kill them, and they run away, being chased immediately. Randall states how he thinks there's a doppelganger out there, but the hitchhiker doesn't respond to any of this, instead asking them if they have any weed. They both focus on Neon, who is on the ground. Randall mentions how he's been on a break from smoking weed because of Luther's camping trip. Luther starts to reflect on how other people might have killed this person already from the questions he has made, and tells him to let them know where the stop is. He tells them they already passed it. His scarf hits Luther as he talks with Randall about normal, everyday stuff, like going out into the woods and killing people. Luther starts to make some noise, perhaps of discomfort, while Randall tells him to just act more natural. On this page we see another weird creature walking along the road, stumbling upon the man from before eating someone else. And on this page we get an illustration of Randall in a field, along with a note from Howdy again. Lucid 27, Humanoid vs Nature released August 31st of 2021. For this comic, we are informed of the following. Nian being the driver and only listening to his master, Luther aware of no one having their seatbelts on, Randall being easier to see in the dark as he is not wearing his usual outfit, Nyan just existing as he is on a tolerance break, Randall being proud of Sebastian's name, and Nana being the only reptilian on the crew, making her pretty special. Over here we get a bit of information on the new characters, which include the Wanderer, who is a guy who swears a lot and has a guardian angel watching over him, 
Hitchhiker B, a guy who just walked aimlessly into the woods, and Hitchhiker A, a cute lad who is drinking blood in the forest. The story continues with the wanderer saying lots of bad words before turning around and throwing a can of food at the bloodstained Hitchhiker. He asks him to just kill him already before his guardian angel brings the Hitchhiker to the ground, saying how hard it is to keep him alive. He creates a barrier around the Hitchhiker, which is soon broken. He then throws the spirit away, sliding across the road as a truck comes in front of him. He sticks to the window of the vehicle and starts to eat the flesh of the driver, taking off the can of food off his horns. Once he finishes eating, he climbs the truck, finding a talking heart which taunts him. Moments later, the truck is taken off the road and destroyed. The guardian angel, trembling, talks to the wanderer to try and make him find a place to sleep for tonight, stumbling upon the ivory family and their truck. Luther asks if they haven't seen this man already who is screaming at them wanting to be killed. Luther tells Nian to move to the right, being able to see the sign from before warning against picking up hitchhikers. Randall keeps being Randall and suggests going back home. Hearing no one reply to him, he starts asking questions to the stranger as he swallows. Randall goes on with his question and Luther tells him he shouldn't ask such a thing. The hitchhiker answers to him, which piques his interest, asking for details. The man talks about how in a movie called Hell's Racer 3, someone is tied with leather straps, which makes Randall get a nosebleed. He asks Luther if he can really stay with them, as the stranger begins to cough. Randall then changes the topic to how his brother is, saying he might just drop dead any night, to which the stranger says he reminds him of his mother. Nian drives over more traffic cones as Luther starts remembering the sign about hitchhikers, the people in the road, and more traffic cones until we get this creepy panel. He asks the driver if he didn't take any wrong turns, and Nian says no. Nian answers positively to his question about this whole thing being weird. Still with the scarf stuck to his head, Randall states that someone is messing with him before asking more questions to the stranger. As they talk, Luther thinks to himself about him being in charge of his own destiny, this allowing anyone to sabotage his plans. With a gross amount of blood now pouring out of his nose, Randall processes a question asked by the stranger and is about to answer it as Luther looks at a weird hole to the side of the road. He tells Nian to stop, and he does, shaking everyone around and getting Randall's blood over them. He puts the truck in reverse and drives towards the hole. Randall asks his brother just what is he doing, and goes into a deep introspection about him, being able to assess predicaments, problem solve any situation and provide resources, as well as being a flexible thinker, a passionate go-getter, versatile and on top of all, independent. His speech gets cut off by them arriving to the destination, stating he has no plans on killing anyone. On the last page we see an illustration of Luther sitting and laying on the floor. Lucid 28, this must be the place, released on October 6th of 2021. For this comic we are informed of Randall being a young man with no future who is going camping. Luther wants losing food in his head and resulting in a terrible fly infestation, Nyan enjoying the ride, thankfully, Nyan still being the driver, Nana being the culprit of eating Nyan's shirt, pink flamingos which were bought by Luther having many uses, and at the bottom, Sebastian. At the honorary mentions we have the hitchhiker once more, who was picked up by Luther because he felt bad for him, the hitchhiker but evil who is now wearing a little hat, and the wanderer with his guardian angel, who are wayward souls of the road. The story continues with the family arriving to the campsite as Luther kicks open the door, smelling the fresh air and breaking into a fit of singing in German. He takes off his shirt, revealing another fancier shirt beneath, and gets off the vehicle. He then points at an empty shopping cart, which makes Randall bleed some more. After getting almost everyone off the truck, he checks on Randall who is doing the Kubrick stare, though he really was just looking for his knife. With the hitchhiker coming out of the truck, Luther tells everyone to set up their tent before opening the back door where Sebastian is. Nian, feeling tired, pulls out a cigarette but is immediately called out by Luther, telling him to be careful with those. Some minutes pass until everything is set up, or at least 97% of it, since all that's left is setting up the security perimeters for the flamingos he brought. Oh, there's Sebastian, oh my god. While setting down some security fences, he tells the stranger he could help too, and he clenches the inside of his mouth until spitting some blood. 
Luther turns around and walks off to him, making himself clear about how things could get better for them as the hitchhiker has pushed enough of Luther's buttons. He tells him he must come to his tent, extending his fingers to perhaps sink them into his skin. Randall interrupts them by asking if he happened to see his pet, causing his fingers to retract. On this page we see Sebastian hiding behind a tree, planning to escape as Randall calls his name. On this last page we see Howdy's doodles of Shizumaru from Samurai Showdown and Bridget from Guilty Gear. Lucid 29, Technical Difficulties in Happy Campers, released on November 5th of 2021. For this comic we are informed of the following, Randall being one of the reasons people shouldn't go out on Halloween night, Luther being very quick to put up Christmas decorations, Nyan being pretty good at speaking just necessary words, Nyan being quite different from his fellow Catman, Nana liking to take care of her looks, and Sebastian not understanding many things by being human. The story continues with Randall and Luther searching for Sebastian as he pulls out a security tool he got from the Everything catalog. The tracker on his hand shows the point of view of the flamingos he bought, which find him very soon, making a very loud noise. Sebastian, covering his ears, comes back to the tent, saying he just had to go for a bit. Randall says he can use the fully set up bathroom now, and Luther suggests they should all get some sleep. Randall says he's starting to feel whatever was in the water and says he doesn't want his coffin, which was left in the truck. After getting a look of his tent, he sticks his head into the dark blanket and says goodnight to Luther. Before leaving, he explains what he should do if he leaves the tent, telling him to just stick to his tent or the bathroom, as the flamingos will be alerted otherwise. Randall then explains his own radius, saying their dreams might link again. Getting out of the tent, Luther guides the hitchhiker to his, saying it's the best solution for their problems. Nyon is watching his face as the stranger gets inside the tent, saying he is the main character of his own story, making Luther call him a little narcissist. He quickly realizes he did in fact say that instead of think about it. Inside Luther's head cavity, we see a small fly wandering around, finding themselves in a complex labyrinth until reaching a huge room for them to lay their eggs. Already in bed, Luther finds it hard to fall asleep and decides to call his doctors. He calls the first one, but they don't pick up, assuming they are either asleep or dead. Outside the tent, we see the outline of Randall's face breathing violently. Some smoke can be seen passing by Luther as Nian lights up a cigarette. The doctor on the other side picks up the phone and begins talking with Luther, going on about how problems are necessary for people to develop. Somewhere else, we see the bloodstained hitchhiker walking. Eventually, Luther loses signal with the doctor, ending the chapter. Not really. On these panels we can see Randall telling Luther he needs a bit more chaos to make things interesting, as avoiding it isn't the way to go. On the last page we get an illustration of Randall looking all cute. Lucid 30, The Chaos is Real, released on May 15 of 2022. The story continues with Randall spying on Luther, who is trying to call his doctor once more, only to hear that the number is not available. He thinks positive, saying he might have gone to bed already. Nian is watching the TV, who is currently showing some advertisement that Luther considers desperate. Randall goes inside the tent, pointing out how he has a phone and a television inside. He mentions something about their toothpaste supply, pulling his sets of teeth and saying things are going to get rough. Luther tells Nian to go look for the travel toothpaste under the sink. He says that they can hang out in the tent, carrying them back if they happen to fall asleep. On the television, a familiar face shows up. It is the people who once met Randall and got a piece of their body taken by him. Nyon comes back after not finding the toothpaste, which makes Luther look by himself, arguing something isn't right. Randall goes to check on his friend, who is sleeping with straps around his body. He gets close to him and offers to help if he tells him who his favorite girl from Neon Genesis Evangelion is. The stranger asks what an Evangelion is, after really making sure they didn't bring more toothpaste, Luther says they got a problem, going back to what he said about problems being necessary to change and grow. He turns around and sees Randall close to the hitchhiker, grabbing him by the shirt. In the end, Randall returns to his tent, finding Sebastian shivering inside his sleeping bag. Randall tells him they have to go to his brother's tent, as he won't trust him with the only toothpaste left. Soon, they come back into the tent, saying Sebastian is cold as he is just a human. Oddly enough, he starts feeling hot and falls to the ground while Luther offers him plenty of things, when perhaps all he needs is just water. Somewhere in the forest, we see a girl inside a car, along with the hitchhiker's thumb sticking up, while staring. 
She keeps her cool about it, saying something about her boyfriend but cutting her own train of thought and starting to cry. Out of the woods, a small dark creature comes towards the hitchhiker, ending the chapter. On the last two pages, we see Nian's way of surviving in the woods, which consists of listening to Nirvana's cover of Flake of Fire on repeat. And over here we have Luther as a plague doctor. Lucid 31, Cooking with Brother, released on August 14th of 2022. For this comic, we are informed of Randall being good at convincing others he is human and is capable of working. Luther enjoying when a narrator says we, Nyan's face being already washed and ready for bed, Nyan still tired from driving for hours, Nana liking showers and baths and also good at digesting, Sebastian adapting to his environment though he will always try to escape when possible, and Kitty Carpet, Luther's pet who likes it under the carpet. On the outsider corner we have Hitchhiker B, who is a bit out there because of his manners and some other things he has said along the way, and Hitchhiker A, who is drawn to noise and consumes other beings to form his personality. The story continues with Randall being quite vocal about his anger while everyone sleeps. We can see him playing Donkey Kong Country and using foul language, getting to a game over screen as his brother tells him his time is off. He says he is so mad he could just do a very no-no thing. Randall then mentions how he feels like they never left the house. They talk for a bit more until Luther tells him it's time to rest. Hours later, Sebastian wakes up from his sleep, wanting to go to the bathroom. He turns around and sees Luther staring at him and pretends to go back to sleep. This doesn't go well for him, as he gets real close to him to ask if he wants blueberry pancakes. He adds that he was actually the first one to wake up and had to wait until someone woke up as well. Luther goes out of the tent and sees the sunrise, saying it's a gorgeous morning for making pancakes. Inside, the hitchhiker tells Sebastian he also has to pee before he goes to the bathroom, finding Neon using a litter box. He goes outside where Luther is and he asks if he could handle the camera, wanting the camping trip to be a more permanent memory. Sebastian says he has to go to the bathroom and Luther points at the right direction, scratching his face and drawing some milk. Sebastian comes back and sits in front of Luther to record him, simply staring at the camera. He says he got stage fright that time, but manages to get some words out on the next attempt, cracking his neck in a way that hurts him. Because of that comment, he tells Sebastian they must start again, and he collapses. Nyan talks with Luther about the hitchhiker, telling him to remove the straps, as Sebastian gets up after seeing the syringe on Luther's hand. We get this panel of Luther giving us the recipe for his blueberry pancakes of love while talking to the camera. He feels quite itchy inside his head as the larva falls into the mixture. Nyan comes back and tells his master about the stranger going to the bathroom before he could release him, saying they can clean up after they eat. Time passes and the food is finally done, with everyone sitting down getting ready to eat. Everyone but Randall, as he is soon awakened by Luther. He takes away his play before he can take a bite, as he wants to eat together with everyone. The hitchhiker spits out the food, as he was eating the special pancakes for Luther. After Randall gets close, he is giving his plate, and they all start to eat. He mentions how they are just made of blueberries before showing a detailed panel of him and Randall eating the pancakes. Randall compliments his cooking skills, saying that he could loosen up more often, as others won't be so tense that way. Luther notices Sebastian taking a sweet time eating the pancakes, asking him if there's something wrong with them. Towards the end of the comic, we get this message about bad things that can happen to you while camping, along with the drawing of Ethereal Q's face. Once again, we're back with the girl inside the car, waking up and thinking her boyfriend had returned, when in reality it was just the hitchhiker, who was now able to talk to her and called her Marcy. On the very last page, we get this illustration of the Ivory family, with Nian feeling very grumpy because of a nicotine fit. The hitchhiker mentions how he doesn't have anyone to consider family, and Luther replies with okay. And cut. Over 30 surreal and sometimes nonsensical comics explained to the best of my abilities. Writing down the script for this took me a few days, and having made it to this point makes me very happy and satisfied. Yeah, I'm honestly lightheaded from rereading the series a second time because I ended up spotting new things this time around, as well as finding out, oh, so that's how this character died, and so on and so on. The fact that you also made it here tells me your brain must feel awfully tired, and it should. But in the end, I want to say thank you so much for watching. 
be safe out there and, I don't know, dream for fun, just like Randall does. Good night. <laughs>